Hey everybody, hope you guys are all doing safe. So if you follow my channel regularly, thank you for that. You may have noticed that I haven't been uploading as many videos as I usually do. It's not because I've gotten lazy or I've given up on the channel, far, far from it. It's just because there's, there's nothing for me to make a video about. It's a really slow, almost dead period of the year for smartphones. Anyway, since it is such a slow period right now, I figure I might as well do something kind of fun and random. So earlier today, I picked up this Galaxy S21 Ultra for 800 Hong Kong dollars. 800 Hong Kong dollars converts to about 110 US dollars. But as the video title has already spoiled, this is a fake Galaxy S21 Ultra. And most of you watching probably already can tell from the box, even though it actually looks quite professionally done the packaging it looks a little bit different from the real retail box not to mention it's a little bit thicker that's because the fake Galaxy S21 actually includes a charging brick so that's one area where the Galaxy S21 Ultra the fake one beats the real one but that's about it otherwise there's nothing else here that can even come close to the real one so let's open up the packaging okay this already differs from Samsung packaging and yeah, this is the phone. Anyway, here's the real Galaxy S21 Ultra. Let's open it up. So if you just look at the box, other than different colors, they do look kind of similar. But then of course, like I said, the Galaxy S21 Ultra, the real one, doesn't give you anything. You get the phone and then the USB-C cable. That is it. Whereas the fake one, let's check out what you get. We'll put the phone to the side first. So you get, first of all, you get a jelly case you have a USB-C charging cable a charging brick this is what Samsung won't give you and you also get earphones which Samsung also doesn't give you now and yeah the S21 Ultra clone has a headphone jack but yeah this Galaxy S21 Ultra actually looks pretty good this back is plastic but the coating gives it like like a fake metallic finish, kind of like the LG G3. And if you look at the camera module here, like I already said, this phone only has one main camera and one selfie camera. So all these other lenses are fake. Like this actually looks to be completely painted onto the part of plastic, but they actually kind of get some of the details quite right. Like if you look inside here, you actually see a little rectangle. It's representing the periscope zoom lens. Of course, you, there's no real periscope zoom lens in this. There's no zoom lens at all. And then right here, if you look closely, it's kind of funny. That lens inside is just a piece of paper. It's a cardboard and it's sideways right now. It's not in there correctly. So if you look closely, you can see it's just a cardboard. So I would say overall, considering how cheap this phone is, they did a pretty good job of the back at least to recreating a look that at least looks similar to the S21 Ultra. If you don't know what you're looking for, you might fall for it. But then if you flip the phone around, you should be able to tell this isn't a Galaxy S21 Ultra even if you don't follow smartphones that much. First of all, there's a notch, there's a pretty sizable bezel, and the screen is not curved at all. This is a completely flat panel. That's powered on. You'll see that the animations, they've even done a good job of copying the Galaxy S21 Ultra animation. It even says secured by knocks on it. Okay, here we are. Um, so they even aped Samsung's default wallpaper. So we have the real S21 Ultra on the right, in case you can't tell, and the fake S21 Ultra on the left. You notice that there's even navigation buttons that are in that same Samsung design. Now, interestingly, this phone does not give you the option to do swipe gesture navigation. So you have to use these navigation buttons. And they even got it right in having the back button on the right side because that's always been Samsung's quirk. Because just about every other Android phone always had the back button on the left, except for Samsung. And you notice these app icons also look very similar to Samsung's uh, One UI, including the photo gallery. But then check this out. Right here, this is not Spotify. This is a default music app built into the phone but they've just completely stolen the icon from Spotify. But when you tap into it, it is just a music player for you to load MP3s, I guess, as if anyone still do that in 2021. And the app tray even moves left to right, just like on Samsung phones. 
Okay, now let's check out performance. Now, considering that this phone only costs 100 US dollars and it is a rip-off clone phone, obviously you can't expect flagship performance or even mid-tier performance. But even considering that, considering this is $100, performance is even still worse than I thought. This might be the worst phone I've ever used. So for example, let's open up YouTube and see how long it takes. Let's put a timer to the side. So I'm gonna open up YouTube and hit start on a timer and see how long it takes to open up. Well, we're now 12 seconds in and it's still loading. It's not frozen, it will load eventually. 18 seconds. Finally, it opened up in 22 seconds. It took 22 seconds to open up YouTube. And then when I try to sign into Google Play, same thing, it takes like 30 seconds just for the sign in page to load. This is a phone that in the settings actually claims to have six gigs of RAM, but obviously that's a scam. There's no way this phone has six gigs of RAM. So instead I download device info to check the real um, components used and check this out, man, it's crazy. Okay, even the phone. So this phone, so this phone only has one gig of RAM in there, one gig of RAM. As for the SOC, this phone runs on a MediaTek 6582. This is a really cheap budget SOC that can't even handle 4G LTE. This is a 3G SOC. So this phone can't even support 4G, let alone the 5G that it claims in the box. Okay, then now let's check out the cameras. So obviously the camera here is not 108 megapixel. I don't know what the pixel count is, but it's not a good camera at all. Wow, look how slow this phone is. So the details are quite soft. You see a lot of noise on the walls. Now let's take the same picture with the real S21 Ultra. It is night and day. And here are some more samples side by side too. So yeah, this is the ripoff S21 Ultra. Even at 100 US dollars, do not buy this phone. This phone is a complete scam. I mean, obviously the fact that they have no respect for intellectual property and copyright, stuff like that. But um, yeah, even for 100 bucks, performance is terrible. There's only one gig of RAM, which makes the phone damn near unusable. The way I see it, there's really only two markets for this phone. It's for number one, people like me, who's bored as hell and just wanna play with something ridiculous. This to me is pretty ridiculous. A rip-off Galaxy S21 Ultra with a rip-off box and a rip-off software too. So that's the first market. The second market, unfortunately, is for people who don't know better. Someone who are buying this thinking it really is a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. I hope there's not a lot of people out there who fell for this. I hope everybody who bought this phone is like me. They bought it for shits and giggles because this phone is trash. Anyway, that's it for now. This is a really slow month, but starting August, it's gonna get fun because the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and Z Flip 3 are both coming out in early August. I'm gonna get my hands on it, as well as a new flagship phone from Honor. I can't talk about the Honor device yet, but it's gonna be pretty awesome. It's going to have Google and I'm going to be able to get my hands on it pretty early. So if you're interested in keeping up with those phones or more of these fake phones, please consider subscribing to my channel or following me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.